Hallelujah. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. When you are talking of a kingdom, there are two words. King and domain. The king over a, a domain. When you are talking of a domain, you are talking of a sphere of people or subjects. Like in the animal kingdom, the lion is the king. He is in that domain. I love, you know, Geography Channel. And one of the animals I love so much is the lion. He turns back for no animal in the jungle. No matter how big the animal is, he will bring down that animal. Because that is his domain, territorial. And if you are the type that keep pets, say dog, some dogs are territorial. They don't want any other dog around them or any other person, any human being for that matter. I've talked about my dog uh, some time ago. How many of you remember Dominion? Aha. Uh -huh. Dominion actually dominates. He shows that this is his territory. Because that is what I declare to him, that you will dominate this area. So, a king is in charge of uh, a territory or an area. And the power is there. The ability. It says where the word of the king is, there is what? There is power. So when there is a king, he has the ability to dominate or to exercise the grace that is given to him. And then when you now talk about the glory, you are talking of what surrounds the king within his domain. Okay? The, 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 the splendor of his territory. That you see around. That is just a periphery definition, so to speak. But when we're bringing it into that of God, when you talk about the kingdom, you're talking of God's sovereign rule. God's sovereign rule that you cannot challenge. Is that who can say what doest thou? Nobody can challenge him. He does what he wills. The heaven and the heaven of heavens belongs to him. But the earth he has given to man for inheritance. And then when you talk about power, you are talking of God's ultimate ability. To bring about his will and rule. His ultimate ability. Ephesians 3.20. Is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all we can ever ask or think. According to his power that is at work in us. That is the ability of God. He can kill and he can make a life. And nobody can challenge him. He said, I am God. There is none else. I see no other one beside me. He touches the ability of God. His finger is full of power. That he touches mountain and the smoke. There is a volcanic eruption. 
which means there is a kind of dynamite in the finger of God. And that is why, you know, the, the magician in Exodus chapter 8, I think verse 17 or so, from 17 downwards, when Moses threw up the dust and it fills up the place with lies, the magicians also came and said, we are up to it. And they tried and they couldn't bring up anything. And they came up with a communique. This is what? The finger of God. May God exhibit that power in your life. Against every forces contending with you. That God will just, just one finger, not his whole hands. You can imagine his whole hands. Moses said, I want to see you. He said, nobody sees me and is alive. He said, but one thing I will do, when I am going, I will use my hand co to cover you. Now, I then begin to imagine the span of the hand of God. Have you ever thought of that when you are reading that place? How can just the palm of his hand cover a whole human being? Brauche, stand up. Imagine. <laughs> God. Eh? Oh. <laughs> well, something is happening. God wants to pass and he now uses his hand to cover Uchi. And you can... He, he cannot see God. And God just passed. Imagine the span of his hand. That's why the Bible said the population of the world now is 8 billion. And it is in his hands. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. 8 billion people. And he's looking at everybody. How big is his hand? He's got the whole world in his. Help me, people, help me. Whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you. He knows all your profiles. Looking at you, he can extray you. And just by a blow of wind, life is snuffed out. And nobody can query him. He does what he wills. That is his power, the sovereignty of his ability. In Romans chapter 9, the Bible talks about God, 9, 16. Romans chapter 9, verse 16. I will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. I have the prerogative of clemency. And I display it upon whomsoever. I will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. And whosoever I choose not to show mercy, nobody can challenge me. Which appeal court will you take that to? Who will be the judge or the lawyer that will hold brief against God? Excuse me. And the one that frightens me in that chapter 9, he said, I create Pharaoh that I might display my power as a guinea pig. Lord have mercy. There is no time I read that that I'm not, you know, I'm not humbled. What shall we say about Nebuchadnezzar? 
And God changed him from human kingdom to animal kingdom. And he changed his heart. We're talking about the power of God. And he made him to be in that state for how many years? Seven years. And what amazed me is this. Nobody sat on his throne. Until the end of that season. Nobody contest for it. God kept his throne. And after seven years, he restored his mind. The best cardiothoracic surgeon. And what did God do? He restored his mind again. And what was his submission? What was the submission of Nebuchadnezzar? He said, now I know that God rules, what? In the earth over nations and in the affairs of men. That is the God we are discussing this evening about his kingdom, about his power. And then the third one is what? The glory. That is recognition of his kingdom and power. The glory comes from the kingdom and the power. When you see the splendor of it, when you see what comes out of his domain. Solomon was visited by the queen of Sheba and cross-examined Solomon severally. And he saw the splendor of his, of his kingdom and the wisdom. And she fainted at the end of the day. I have never seen anything like this. That is God. Now, with that introduction, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Um, and I want to start from First Chronicles chapter 20. Now, oftentimes, we think this is from the New Testament. But let's, let's go to the Old Testament, 1 Chronicles, chapter 29. This is David bringing exaltation to God. 1 Chronicles, chapter 29. I begin to read from verse number 10. He said, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Hallelujah. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. Thou art exalted as the head above all. Highlight that in your Bible. Verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thy hand is power and might, and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly about the sort? For all things come of thee, and of thy own have we given thee. Let me start from that last statement. Of thy own have we given thee. So when you say, I'm giving God money, is it your money? Talk to me, people. He gave you so that you can give back to him. 
It gives you the ability to work so that you can get an economic return. He gave you the talent, the skill, the ability. And in return, you are given so much for your labor. Even what you are given is not even your worth. You may even worth more than that. Hello? And some of you are underpaid. By the ability of God, by the power of God, he will catapult you up. Amen. Thank you for those two amens. Amen. But you see, this is doxology. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory. It's a submission. The kingdom is yours. The power is yours. The glory is yours. And that's why David could come with this inspiration to say, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Hallelujah. And if it is to your father, then it is mine. If your father owns it, then you own it. And then he went further. He said, thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above all. I'll come back to verse number 12, not tonight, but keep it is a treasure. I actually asterisk it in my Bible because it's a subject to be discussed deeper. Now, that is in the Old Testament. It's been established. The kingdom, the power, and the glory is God's. It's a submission. David received that revelation and understanding. And he said, it is yours. It is yours. Now, come to the New Testament. When Jesus was teaching what we call a format of prayer in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to verse number 13. After this manner, therefore pray, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Can we read verse 10 together? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen? All right? With this kingdom, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now read the next line. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That was the submission. Say, Thy kingdom come. That suggests that there is another kingdom that is a pseudo kingdom that is not of God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, he said, the God of this world has blinded their eyes that the glorious light of the gospel might not shine unto them. Who is the God of this world? 
Satan. How did he become the God of this world? Then go with me again to chapter 4 of Matthew. It's very interesting. Matthew chapter 4. I read from verse number 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set at him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him what? Are we together? Are we more than two? And showed him and what? Look up. Number one, the devil is vast in scriptures. But not with the spirit. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. He was quoting what to the word himself. In the beginning was what? Was the word. He showed him the kingdoms of the world. When he's talking about the kingdom of the world, he's talking about the system. Not just the cosmos. It's talking about the different establishments. And it is still in our life, in our time. We call it seven mountains. That must be conquered. And be submitted to God. He gave him a panoramic view. Of them all. And the glory. And then, on one condition, verse 9, and he said unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus to him, get thee hand, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou worship or serve. Then the devil leave him for a moment. I think in another write-up in the synoptics, he said, it was handed over to me. Let's go to Luke. Now, verse number 6, Luke 4, 6. And the devil, let's read from 5 to put it in context. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, can you put it together? Power and glory. 
election is tomorrow in Nigeria. Many people are contending for that position. For what? For power and what? And glory. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. Please read what is next. For that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. I want to start from there. That kingdom was not his originally. It became his when man fell. When man committed a treasonable felony. And it was handed over to him. It was not his originally. That's why in saying that it was delivered unto him, he was correct. It was not his. He put it in perspective. The devil is a legal person. And he knows how to claim his rights. He said, listen, it was handed over to me. When man fell. But before then, he dangled the carrot before Jesus. Just like he does to many of us today. He would dangle the carrot of this world before you. Maybe pound sterling or euro or dangle position before you at the expense of your salvation, of your soul. Many have made shipwreck of their faith by the things of this world. The, the power that goes with the position and the glory, the splendor of it. The paraphernalia of the office. And you are drunk with that. When they say, listen, if you are having four figures, we're going to raise it to seven figures. A multiple of seven figures. Brother, will you say no? And you say, come on, ungua, 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 bring it. That's what I've been waiting for. But if you are of the spirit, say none of these things move me. Said it was handed over to me. So he was not the original owner. That's why Jesus said, the thief, John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Take care of this. The glory does not belong to him. The power does not belong to him. The kingdom does not belong to him. He deceived man to get it. And many people are still living in deception today. I pray that the Lord will deliver us. Amen. He said it was delivered unto me. It wasn't mine originally. And what was the response of the Lord Jesus Christ? And he did all that before I leave the place. The devil wants worship. That was what caused war in heaven originally. Why should I be the one that will just be giving the worship? Why can't I be worshipped? The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, that his tail caught one third of the angels. 
When you are talking of a mobilizer, the devil is a good mobilizer. He was able to mobilize those angels. How he managed, I don't know. I think when we get to heaven, we will ask. And in verse 7, the Bible said there was war. The angel, uh, Lucifer, fought. And angel Michael also fought. And there was no space again. There are so many scriptures to back that up. But because he wanted worship, go to Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 11 down to verse 18. You will see the narration there of his heart, how his heart was lifted. I, 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 me, my. And he was brought down. He exalted himself. said, I want to be above the stars. It's not possible. He was brought down. Because he wanted worship. And when you go into the music industry today, there are a lot that are inspired by Satan. And when we are teaching about that subject, that area, Yes, he was cast out, but his anointing was not taken from him. It's a perverted wisdom, perverted charisma, perverted ability, and that is what he's still using to date. And many people are running after him. He wanted worship said, if you worship me, I will give you the kingdom. I will give you the power. I will give you the glory. Worship. Friends, do you know that many people are desperate for power, for kingdom, and for glory? And they are ready to sacrifice their soul. And that's why they go into different kind, kinds of initiation. But we're not dealing with that tonight. And people are desperate. Desperate to be in position. Ready to kill to be in position. Ready to make sacrifice to be in position. Ready to do anything at all cost to be in position. Position and power and the glory, all the fun fear that goes with it. Said, if you would just bow down and worship me. And what was the response of the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That's the key. And we must come to that place, brethren, where we acknowledge the sovereignty of God, the sovereign rule of God over kingdoms. He set it up one and he abase another. That was the revelation God gave to Daniel concerning the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and nobody could interpret it. And God was speaking there that the kingdom is his. He gives it to whomsoever he wills. And the fact that you are there, it is not by your power. God can withdraw it at any time. Hallelujah. I think more of what we're doing this weekend, we're going to pray, is to depose some kingdoms. Some false kingdoms over your life. 
those who have put themselves in a, in a domain. And they said, nobody can challenge me. Yes, nobody can challenge them, but God can. They feel they can do and undo. We're going to checkmate them this weekend. And tell them they cannot. Whether political kingdom, economic kingdom, okay, uh, family kingdom, whatever kingdom, we will depose them. Amen. Isaiah 47. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 47. He said, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. That's a heavy scripture. What God is saying is that we are not deposing you. We are not defrocking you. We are not demoting you. You have sat over this kingdom for long. But enough is enough. There are people who are sitting over your life. But want to say enough is enough. Those who are sitting over the affairs of your life, over your marriage, over your businesses, and they, they, they can remotely control. We're telling them, thank you very much. <laughs> Those who feel they can check how your health bill will be. Today you are fine, tomorrow you are in the hospital. They diagnose and they can't see anything. Enough. Is your spirit being angered now? Right from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God and the gentle, the political correct, those who go by the agreement of the family, is that what the scripture says? What did it say? The violence take it by force. The devil will not want to let go. But you have to enforce it. And that's why we have come to say the kingdom, the power, the glory belongs to God. And everyone that have exercised power wrongly over your life shall be defrocked tonight. Amen. They will not just be defrocked, they will be disgraced. Amen. That's why we're looking at Isaiah 47 as, alongside as well. Because when Jesus came, he came to talk about the kingdom. The king and his domain. And the subjects say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand or the kingdom of God. And many parables that he gave is around what? The kingdom of God. Why? Because there has been a false kingdom for a very long time. And the false kingdom in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in your health, shall be deposed. Amen. Can I ask, when? Now. Wow. This is a dangerous zone. <laughs> Keep off. It shows that your mind is made up to say enough is enough. You have fooled around enough. You have tarried with me enough. Now I'm dissociating myself from you. 
by the sword of the spirit. Because that was what Jesus used against the devil and saying that, look, you are a, you are a pseudo king. You are not the real king. He said, the devil comes like a roaring lion. He's not a lion. He's like. So he's pseudo. He's not the real lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he has come in his full might to roar against every strange lion Amen. of your life. Amen. And they shall be devoured. Amen. They will not devour you anymore. Amen. The kingdom belongs to God. The king in his domain. The king in his palace. And where he is, the word of the king stands. And nobody can say, what doest thou? And the Lord has come to establish that in our midst. This weekend, you will enforce his rule. You will enforce his sovereignty. And you will tell the devil, Jesus rules here. I think I've shared that testimony with us in this place. I'm not sure. There is a, a man of God, one of the senior ministers that I work with. They have a poster in their house in, at the front of the door fulfilling Deuteronomy chapter 5. And he said, Jesus rules here. That this is the domain of Jesus. This is the embassy of Jesus. So every other kingdom is not permitted here. So we went for a meeting, my first meeting, Nigerian Fellowship of Evangelical Students in Benin at Uniben. And we had a case that we could not conclude. So we came with that case from Benin to Ibadan in Oyo State. Went to the house of our uh, leader. And immediately this person saw that poster. She could not move again. Jesus rules here. This is the domain of Jesus. I tried to move her. She could not move. And then she flexed a muscle and I found myself on the floor. A whole me. Of course, it wasn't her power. Because this person I could scoop off the floor. But another entity came on her and I fell. Yakata. Because of that poster. Tonight you will enforce in your house, in your family, in your body, in your finances, in your career, in your business. Jesus rules here. This is the domain. This is the kingdom of Jesus. When you are going to walk, you are going with the mindset that Jesus rules here. As you sit at your desk, you are sitting to represent Jesus. I love the way my brother is doing it. Can you see that? With a military stance that Jesus rules here. You are right, brother? That's the key. In fact, his palm is very tough. You think it's uh, a software. That one is hardware. I won't shake you again. That is it. The domain of Jesus is here. In this church, this is the domain, the kingdom of Jesus. And Jesus said, the kingdom is within you. 
Ha, ha, ha. So which means every other kingdom has no place. Jesus rules here. This is the domain. My body is the domain of Jesus. There is no room for cancer. Cancer is from another kingdom. There is no room for ulcer. Ulcer is from another kingdom. There is no room for barrenness. Barrenness is from another kingdom. There is no room for delay. Delay is from another kingdom. There is no room for uh, um, poverty. Poverty is from another kingdom. Is somebody hearing me tonight? There is no room for struggle. Struggle is from another kingdom. Okay, what belongs to you in your kingdom? Prosperity, advancement, healing, fruitfulness, promotion, lifting. That is what belongs to you. And that is what you represent.